roll on is 22. Yeah. Well, you get the ball as close as one step in, and like Kelvin came mm -hmm. in there and dropped mm -hmm. the pass. You see? Yeah. As opposed to passing it over there. Well, I should make that clear then. If the pass is not there, if somebody else is open, or if you got a shot before you complete the play, take it. When Bill Sharman became coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, it was obvious from the start that he meant business. Sharman was surrounded by some of the greatest names in the NBA. Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, and Captain Elgin Baylor. But unexpectedly, after only nine games, a 13-year veteran retired. He wound it up in a blaze of glory, an average career-wise 27 points a game, the third greatest scorer in the history of the game, at only six feet five, the fourth greatest rebounder in the history of the game, 10 times an all-star. Ladies and gentlemen, to make a presentation of his jersey to the Laker owner, Mr. Jack Kentrook, here is Captain Elgin Baylor. Elgin's jersey was retired, and young Jim McMillan, number five, took over. But after a fast start, the Lakers slowed down. West and Keith Erickson were hurt. And it wasn't until a seemingly routine game against the Baltimore Bullets that the Laker fortune turned. Behind Wilt Chamberlain's rebounding and Gail Goodrich's scoring, the Lakers led by four points after three quarters. The Lakers held on to win. And little did anyone realize that more than two months would pass before they would lose another basketball game. Records fell and then swelled into a championship roar. The Los Angeles Lakers were off to the finest year ever played in the NBA. After the initial win against Baltimore, Los Angeles picked up momentum until the NBA win streak was in sight. These were team victories now, a team that included a healthy Jerry West. But perhaps their biggest reason for success was number 13, Wilt Chamberlain, whose awesome domination on defense inspired all the Lakers and often started what was to become a familiar sight, at home or away, the Laker fast break. Number 52, Happy Harrison, was frequently on the receiving end of the break pass. And this incredible show wasn't limited to the starting five. Newcomer John Q. Trapp came off the bench to spark two of the victories. Big Leroy Ellis back with the Lakers. And number 12, Pat Wiley, seemed to be everywhere at once. And when the ball got to a third new Laker, Flynn Robinson, it was instant points. Consecutive wins 18 and 19 were achieved, and Bill Sharman and his assistant, Casey Jones, plotted for more. Los Angeles tied the record when they beat Phoenix in overtime for win number 20. Now the record for the most consecutive win, held by the Milwaukee Bucks, was on the line against the always dangerous Atlanta Hawks. The Lakers poured it on, and they were coasting when Pistol Pete Maravich brought the crowd to its feet, and the Lakers back to reality. With just over a minute to play, the Hawks were closing in, and the record was in jeopardy. It was time for another Laker extra effort, and they got it. Leroy Ellis broke free, and Jerry West hit him for the biggest stunt of the year. And Los Angeles finally pulled away. And then the lightning-quick hands of West struck again, and Atlanta was finished. The record was theirs, and the game ball went to Coach Bill Sharman, the master architect of the new Los Angeles Lakers. Most thought the win streak might end at 21, but it continued, and the attendance grew. Packed houses greeted them at home as well as on the road. The Lakers were now a national sensation. Each game was tougher than the last, and as the pressure built, every opponent wanted to be the one to end the streak. 
Now, 11 wins after the record 21st, the Lakers were in Atlanta to prove the hot coach Ricky Guerin win number 21 was no fluke. And they did just that. Coach Sharman had his team ready, and they literally ran circles around the erratic hawk. Jim McMillan was the game's high scorer with 26 points. And this convincing and unprecedented 33rd straight win now took on more importance as the Lakers traveled to Milwaukee to face the world champion Bucks and their avid fans. The Lakers had already gone the entire month of November and December undefeated, and they certainly didn't want their streak to end here. As the second quarter began, Los Angeles had taken a two-point lead. And apparently, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was getting frustrated by Wilt's play and the tension of the game. However, Happy's offense couldn't be sustained as he and the other Lakers turned ice cold. They shot a miserable 29% in the first half while Milwaukee's young guard turned it on. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that Los Angeles countered the Bucks' attack. Glenn Robinson came in and not only whittled down the Bucks' lead, but he did it mostly inside, over Jabbar himself. Robinson seemed to be the spark that the Lakers had been looking for, but when he had helped cut the Bucks' lead to four, the game's complexion changed. The Lakers could do nothing right, while Milwaukee did nothing wrong. Los Angeles had come from behind before, but the swarming bucks were just too much. This time, anyway. With the season at the halfway point, it was inevitable that the amazing win streak would eventually be stopped. And appropriately, it was the world champion who ended it with style January 9th. 1972. There was